So I pulled into the pit and I was climbing out of the car and I see this guy come over with a big cowboy hat and I look up and I see it's Mr. Shelby. And he says, uh, hey son, I, he says, can I talk to you? I says, yeah. So I got out of the car. He says, my name's Carol Shelby. I says, oh, I know who you are. <laughs> he says, I want to thank you for the Texas size butt whooping you put on us. He says, going to make my engineers work a lot harder on our cars. He says, because a 351 Cleveland has just roached our car. Today we're heading to West Suffield, Connecticut to rescue two Panteras. A 1971 known as the world's fastest Pantera. Unbelievable history. The amount of winds that is racked up and the top speed is amazing. And a 1974 rubber bumper Pantera that's nicely restored for the same guy and a 57 T-Bird. So grab your cup of joe and let's go. And we're here in West Suffield, Connecticut. There's James with the Ram and the PJ trailer and Alex with the other Ram and the enclosed trailer. We're hoping to buy three at this location. We told the seller would be here at six o'clock. It's 557. And these guys, James and Alex, drove 1,750 miles to get here. Logistically, this was an incredible day. Hopefully it's an incredible buy day. Let's go. What's up, gangsters? What's going on? Ready? Oh, finally, man. We're ready. Y'all ready? Oh, man. What's up, nerd? What's up? You, you ready? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. We gave you one with a side swipe? <laughs> yeah, that was already there. Hopefully, they're going <laughs> to honor it, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What a beautiful place. Isn't it? Hi. Dennis so, Collins. Nice to meet you in person. Nice. nice to meet you, sir. This is my father, Roland. Hi, Hi how, how are, are you, wife, sir? Joan. Pleasure. Pleasure. Hi, wife, yeah. Joan. Nice to meet you. So, nice let me tell you. you real quickly why they're here. Okay. So this is Grand Central Station. Like Wally is known in town, so they see some activity, people stop in. Okay. So there are deflectors, okay? Perfect. So, all right. Very good. Cool. All right. This is Alex Bowling. Oh, James. I know Alex. Okay. I've seen him on TV. Yeah. Yeah. James, that's James, and that's James Autry. That's James? Yeah. <laughs> and this is Zach? Zach part? on the camera. Zach on the camera. It was good. I slept most of the way. Oh, that's good. Nice. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Started the day early, as always. Hey, so a little piece of history. This house is one of the oldest houses in America. Wow. It was built in 1700, we figure. Okay. It was transferred for the first time in 1766. Wow. That's the first time it changed hands from a family to another. It was owned by Captain Pynchon, who was one of George Washington's favorite captains in the Revolutionary War. That's very good. That is awesome. So I know you like history, right? I love history, I do. I'm whipping some on you, brother. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So you want to take a walk and see some cars, or what do you want to do? Yeah, let's see the cars. Absolutely. Let's do that. Absolutely. Come on up here. The T-Bird first. It's in this barn. And the other Panteras are in the work garage. I figured we go in, uh, just like you said, desirability factor. Right. So we'll start with the T-Bird, then we'll go with okay. the 74 Pantera. Okay. And we'll, then we'll leave the big one for last. All right. Okay, so here we go. Here is the T-Bird is in here. Come on in here. Let me put some lights on. We'll open open the store. Oh yeah. There we go. We're gonna have to roll a car up. This is real lightweight. We're pretty good at that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but let me show you the T-Bird. It's had a, you know, decent enough driver quality restoration. So it's not roached out or anything. Okay, so 1957 base car, four right, barrel. Right. Not an E-Bird, not an F-Bird. But a stick. Factory is a stick. Okay. Factory stick. That's like that. 
Yeah, they didn't make too many of those. Oh, you want to be by? Sure. Is this red or dusk rose? No, it's it's red. It's red. Okay. Yeah. They I make two different kinds of red that year, right? One's flame, one's something else. I don't know. Well, the biggest T-bird experts in the world are actually in Dallas. It's the right, a Amos, Amos Minner and yeah, Justin right, Minner. Yeah. Yep. So I've known them forever and yeah. ever. Great guys. They are the definitive experts on these baby birds. Can you fit you in there, buddy? Barely. Yeah. But if you're over about 5'9", you got to have a soft top. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Can't be a hard top. That's right. How long has this been sitting? This has probably been sitting since 17. They did have it running about a month ago because the guy was interested in buying it, but, you know, didn't have the money, you know, the, the deal. Well, if it ran a month ago, I was going to have it running in 10 yeah. minutes. Okay, you can have it running in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No problem, right? He's the beast pushing the all came with yeah. His own battery, I, I, I don't think this battery's good in this car, so it might need a jump box, but. Uh, do we have a jump box? No, but well, we got extra batteries. Okay, even better. Well, hey, Pantera sign up here, a date tomato or something. Great. Look at that. Yeah. We got a nicer one inside, the other. Because this was up. So this was on Alejandro Di Tomaso's map, this place here, because Wally was the guy. For the Northeast, if you owned a Pantera, it was probably passed through here. It's DNA passed through here. Right. I've got pictures to show you his parties where he had multiple, multiple Panteras, and he had a lot of wrecks. So I've got some history to show you in a moment. I've done a lot of reading about you guys lately, including yourself. You guys definitely know how to set up a Pantera. Yeah, it ran pretty good. I think one of the funniest quotes I saw in several magazines was, whenever you guys rolled up, everybody was like, holy <laughs> expedite, they're here. Because <laughs> nobody ever won when y'all showed up, right? Yeah, so my dad is 90 years old, that's his car. Wow. So the apple didn't fall far nope. from the tree. Nope. <laughs> Look at that. That's awesome. I'm hoping to fly a helicopter when I'm 90. We're going to squeeze by you guys. I hope you don't mind. Okay. So. Here. Put some lights on. We'll open some doors. So this is actually sits. You know, we didn't do a thing to it. You don't even look at that. So right there, can you hit that button on the wall? Yep. So if you look up at the paint, a little bit of grab a glue going on. Which is a fantastic color. Oh, I love that. If I had this car, that's what it'd go to. So that is. The issue is, which it won't be on this because you can tell, is I, and correct me if I'm wrong, you know more about Panteras than I do, there were three blues. Right. Yeah. So was. you had, they called one a medium blue. Right. And they called, the, one was a metallic blue, and yeah. you had grabber blue. That's right. obviously grabber blue. That's grabber blue. That's Mustang grabber blue. I went ahead and pulled the uh, records through Marty Auto Works on this car. Right. And it does show blue two, okay, which so two is grabber blue. Yeah. So. What a great car this would restore to, to blue. Can you imagine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, uh, I could only assume they'd put it red because it's an Italian car. Right. You know, what they're built yeah. in Turin, but, oh, yeah. grabber blue is the way to go. <laughs> right, exactly. So now you'll see that the registration on this says 2010, but Wally knows every cop in the area here, so he drives this around like, you know. Wally has no rules. No rules. Okay, no rules. I know somebody like that. I do. You do? <laughs> <laughs> Who would that be? I don't know. <laughs> So when did this last run? Okay, so Justin, one of the police officers that's from town, drove this in the fall and drives it on the street because he's a cop. Okay. And he can do that. That's my engine number four out of my group five car. So this car, uh, this motor I know quite a bit about. Aluminum C heads, okay. Uh, 495 horsepower, 444 foot pounds of torque on the dyno. Wow, okay. that is massive. So, so it scoots pretty good. Stock ZF gearbox? Or you, yep. Stock ZF dash two, okay. dash two. So uh, it's a real strong runner. Yeah. Y'all just, just, just use this as a street car though. This one wasn't raced? Yeah, no, no, that one never raced. That was the beast. Okay. That one is known far and wide, as you saw in the article, right? Do you think we can get this car up and running today or no? Oh yeah, you could. Yeah, okay. you got a battery. Yep. There you go, Alex, there's two for you. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. So who made this wheel? Uh, so 
Luisi makes a lot of wheels. I think that could be their product. I'm not sure. Uh, but there are a lot of aftermarket wheels from Dennis Quella, Steve Wilkerson, uh, you know, all of those guys that are out there, you know. Um, guys that, you know, Bobby Byers, Paul Pantera, you know. Good looking simple wheel. Yeah. It says uh, OBA on it, OBA, or maybe OLA. But know. see, this is one of their downfalls right here. Alex, you probably see this right here. See what you're looking at? Right. I think you got there, buddy. Rust. Rust, a little bit. But it really doesn't need uh, to be dipped at all. Let me get some pictures for you guys, just show you something. So, this is all the titles and stuff. I got titles for both these cars. And keys. Okay. So this is why we went to the uh, yellow race car. You see the problem here? Look at that. You see a problem? We're, we're still strong enough to go inside the GT40 in a corner, but look at the body. Yeah, it's, it's twisting. This car doesn't twist at all. This is a skateboard. Okay. Yeah, well, but you guys structurally well, did a ton of work to that car. Wally did. Okay, I, so I, Wally did the work. I'm a mechanical idiot. <laughs> Here's my disclaimer, okay? Well, you're in a lot of the articles. Well, yeah, but um, I, I don't do that that stuff. So this was that car. That's the car. That's how it started. That was the titled car from Pennsylvania. So this is this 2181? Yes. Okay. So this is car 2181, guys, right. for the guys who are out there looking right. at history. Right. And, and we, this is how Wally, how deeply he pulled that car apart. All okay. the way. Yeah. So he that's on a... a um, what do you call that? A, a chassis. Jig. A jig, yeah. Now it, it, and that's it, Wally. And this is the oil bar going in. That's Wally doing some work. This is in the lower shop. This is before this shop was built. So this was, if you were in the northeast, this is where you brought your Pantera to detail. Look up there. How cool is that? Yeah. Wow. Now there's some, <laughs> there's some, uh, let's say, infringement on the the name De Tomaso, but Wally doesn't care. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. And, but and and Mr. Di Tommaso sent them that. After we won with this car, Alejandro Di Tommaso sent them that. The Pantera DSI, yeah. Yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. So so to digress just a tiny bit. Yeah. Yep. So these guys are building this car mm -hmm. on a jig. This is an yeah. actual De Tommaso Pantera jig. Right. That they that Wally was able to get according right. to one of the articles. Oh, he built it. Oh, he built the jig. Yeah, he did. Okay. okay. I, I read an article. That actually said they lent it to him. And then that's the car after it was painted. By Plymouth Auto. This is the car without its motor. Uh, you're keeping all these, okay? So this is going with the car. That's the, the inside of the car. This is Pat Michael, our electrical expert and chassis um, expert. He owns, he owned Future Auto out of Boston, and his name is Pat Michael. So there's that. And Dick Piedemont was our engine builder, and he's there putting some tuning on the car. Okay. This is our car going to eclipse a Porsche GTU. Now this. This class here, Porsche came to Lime Rock, and in a 40-minute session, we lapped them twice. That is significant. Okay. Well, it gets better. He'll probably tell yeah. you the next Porsche story. So, so uh, that's me back in the day. It's not important. This is when Wally talks to anybody. Wally's a very a man of very few words. So he's talking to Doug Smith here and myself. He's telling us what our chassis are doing out there and how we can improve it. So he's quite a guy. So he listens. Yeah, and this is to make you cry. 512 boxer yeah <laughs> but this is what we wanted That's to run one of my against, favorite cars okay this is the cars we wanted to run against yeah the pro car yeah wow. i actually have an m1 but i don't have a I pro know. car a white one yeah i know i see so f40 yeah i mean they're running yeah, some yeah. serious serious right. cars so before the gt2 porsche was called the widowmaker the the pantera was known to me as a widowmaker and this is why wow that's, that's a, a hard hit one. Yeah, 130 miles an hour into a bridge abutment. Both people died. So these are all Panteras sitting right here? They were right here, yes. Like literally, yeah, this was right the right shop right for right Panteras right in this right entire area. Group five that was hit hard in the rear end, sitting out there in the snow. This is a guy who put moon roofs in his car. The okay, car so folded in half. Now that you mentioned group five, yeah. these flares are group four, right? Group four. What, what makes it a group five is the side sill. So on my car, let me, okay, so here's a group five car. So this is at my house. Wally calls a party. This is how many Panteras show up. Wow. Okay. Wally is the guru. Okay. okay. All right. So th that's how many people show up. My car is a group five car because it has a side sill plus a rear wing. This does it. We wanted straight line acceleration, which this car at 200 miles an hour was 
an iffy situation. But if you had a wing, you would have had some more downforce. Yeah, I would have. Had I was curious about that. Why you guys didn't have a wing on it? Because we wanted straight line speed. We wanted to take everybody out and just just roll around them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Brute force. Yeah. So that was again. This is where it all started. My car was com combination street and track. You can't have both. So Wally says, "Hell with that. Let's just build a track car." He said, "I want to build it for you, and I want you to drive it." I said, "Okay. You got a deal, right?" I mean, you have some of the best guys in the world building your car. You were obviously one of yeah, the best right. drivers in the world for what you did. So the we're, one we're, other story I heard. It's a team effort. It's, a, it's all about the team. After you guys literally roasted Porsche like two or three times, yeah. they brought the 959 out and ran against you, right? Right, yeah. And we, they beat the 959. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. That is really cool. Yeah. yeah. I know. So th those are the things that we did. And, and then we got to know uh, Carol Shelby. Interesting story with Carol. Um, I was running at Lime Rock, I didn't know he was there and he had some of his continuation GT40s. So I pulled into the pit and I was climbing out of the car and I see this guy come over with a big cowboy hat and I look up and I see it's Mr. Shelby. And he says, uh, hey son, I, he says, can I talk to you? I says, yeah. So I got out of the car. He says, my name's Carol Shelby. I says, oh, I know you are. <laughs> he says, I want to thank you for the Texas size butt whooping you put on us. He says, going to make my engineers work a lot harder on our cars. He says, because a 351 Cleveland has just roached our cars. Yeah, so, yeah. bad. bad yeah. Yeah. And what's neat is there's a, there's a ton of footage of you out there running against GT40s. Right, yeah. And then there's kind of something that I've talked about before. I just kind of want your opinion on it. I, sure. I can remember back in the early 80s when I first started buying big cars. Yeah. A Pantera, a Mura, and a 512 Boxer were all mm -hmm. the same price. Yes, they were. And so look at, look now a Mura is $2 oh, million. Yeah, dollars, exactly. And a 512 Boxer is still around, is around 200 right. ish. Right. And these really haven't moved. No. And they, they should. Because they're mixed pedigree, right? It's a mongrel car, right? ZF German transaxle. The Prince of Darkness did the electrical in this, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. That's why the English drink warm beer, because Lucas refrigerators. Don't work. So yeah. Don't work. And so, you know, American motor, Italians uh, styling by an American, though, Tom Taharda. And Tom's a lovely guy. I got to, because of the racing, we got to meet Tom. He says, wow, I can't believe what you're doing with the car. And I says, well, Wally built it, you know, and that's the key. Wally's the genius here, okay? That's, that's he's the guy. Yeah, and, right. and it, it, it comes out on, on the history of him and stuff like that. Yeah. There's also a couple of key things on here that I would like for you to point out because, yeah. again, I'm not an expert. Okay. But I believe those wheels are crazy rare, aren't they? Yes, there's between 10 and 20 sets. So those are 14 by 15 inch, okay? Look Running that, out of tires. Okay, so insane. this is Look what's bad. Those Hoosier tires are rated to 150 miles an hour. Okay. And those are the same type of tires we turn 206 miles an hour with. So it wasn't the smartest thing, okay. <laughs> but, like, you know, it's not the smartest thing. Okay, so those are crazy rare tires, yes. So there's around 20 sets of these. Yeah, maximum. Wow. Uh, Santiago Di Tommaso, who I became friendly with, that's Alejandro Sen's son, says 10 were made. 10, Ten sets. sets, wow. But, yeah. but Mr. Di Tommaso himself said 20, so, you know, I think he would know, right? I don't know. So, yeah. Very Spartan. I love it. That's how it's supposed to be. Yep. You know, real men drive race cars on the street. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this car can get away from you really quickly, Dennis. So there's that disclaimer I'll give you. Okay. Okay. Well, be careful. Yeah. This this For thing. For the first thirty minutes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Once you get this thing fired up, and you know what? People will hear you coming from miles away. This thing shakes the ground. I tell you what else is neat is the fact that the the vents on this car. You guys got a title. Yeah. A lot of these cars that were built up race cars yeah. don't have paperwork. But Wally was selling cars, right? Okay. So he would take cars, restore them, and you know, I mean, that's why you see all those cars lined up. If Wally said, hey, we're going to have a party. Now, you think he'd have a party and he'd get up there and speak to people. No. Probably said 20 words the whole time he was there, you know, I mean, just, he was the guy. He's a man of very few words. So there's a switch. Right there, you know, say fan on it. See the second yellow switch? If you're idling at all, at all traffic, if you're crazy enough to run this on the street, which you probably are, because you did that cannonball stuff, okay? <laughs> so r run that fan, okay? okay? Don't let the thermostat come on because it'll overheat. Okay? What's the sequence to start it? Oh, it's it just normal? normal? Yeah, just, just normal. Just one yeah. toggle on a push yeah, button? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah, right in the center. See the toggle switch right there? Yeah. Yeah, just put all your lights up on and then hit the toggle switch. 
And any fuse you need is right there too. Okay, Did, Wally was a king of simplicity. I mean, you guys are running these cars hard. Have you ever had a problem with a ZF gearbox? Never, they're I bulletproof. Have, they are just bulletproof, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, so I was just talking to a friend of mine, Jerry Sackett, who is at uh, Pantera uh, International. Uh, they sell parts and he uh, drag races these things, okay? And he was telling me that Gary Hall had over 500 pulls on a 700 horsepower Pantera down the drag strip before it, break, before servicing it. Right, before servicing it. Yeah. When we were restoring my M1, I called a guy and he goes, you know, about rebuilding the box, he goes, why would you do that? No, you don't. He goes, the M1 didn't yeah. make enough power to ever tear that thing up. He goes, right. I'm just gonna send you a seal kit, don't even take it apart. Right. I'm like, yeah. well, I've never had an issue with one either. These so. are common to the M1, the GT40. Uh, that, which these, is amazing. Yeah. And some uh, Formula One cars that Di Tommaso built back in the day. Okay. And the issue is now is they've gotten expensive, not because they break, because everybody wants them for their GT40 continuation. Right. But there's a good connection. That's Roy Butfoy Jr., I believe. He's in California. He's the guy. So this is Wally's creation right here. And uh, so he ran the alternator off the half shaft, not to rob power. And then just a extra transmission cooler and just uh, this car ran really strong. Okay, so the early motor that you guys won a lot of races in on some of the paperwork that you sent. Yes. This is a newer motor. Newer motor. With more power. Yes. So we, when I was campaigning a car, that came off the dyno at 495 horse because we wanted it to live, okay, at okay. high speed, okay? And so now Wally, well, I got hurt very badly racing a Porsche, and um, you know, I couldn't race anymore, couldn't keep my license, uh, competition license, so he put another driver in the car and they, you know, whatever reason, um, so they decided they needed more power, so this one makes about 600 horsepower. Car weighs 2,450 pounds. So this car's never been at top speed with this motor. So when this, so the, and correct me if I'm wrong, I know there's two different times at Pocono that you guys had this car north of 200. Yes. That's unbelievable. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. 201 and 206 at Pocono on the straight. So I'm not talking out on the highway. Oh yeah. I'm talking on the track. Yeah, we're on the IMSA course. So we're coming out of the straightaway out through the banking and on Long Pond, they had set up timing lights and they came and gave me a slip that said 206.33 which it was an IMSA track record with a 1971 Di Tommaso. Is that still the record for Pantera? Yes, so, the world's fastest Pantera. You're looking That's at cool. it, you're touching it. Sometimes I tell Alex and stuff, he thinks I'm exaggerating until no, I actually see it. You saw the right? <laughs> so, an interesting story, real quickly. At Pocono, they shipped over three uh, Diablo uh, spec racers, okay, mm -hmm. to run against us. And like they, the Evolution cars. Right, right. and it, they were there all week in testing. And we took this car off the trailer with rain tires on it, okay? And they said, well, I said, just warm the engine up. So I went out on my out lap fairly slow. The second lap I did, we were three seconds a lap faster than their best time all week. And they called uh, Italy and Italy said, don't put our cars out. Those are our brand new spec racers. That's 1971 Pantera's turning faster times than you. We're done here. Then they left, it was over. But this car, from the specs that I've read, would still probably be insanely competitive. Oh yes, it is. So that uh, I will assure you. Some of the other things that I was most blown away by. I mean, this car will outrun the GT40s and then F40 Le Mans. You saw that. I was two of them. Y'all yeah. outran. Yeah. So there was another article that I went way, way, way off and deep, and the guy was talking about. It. He said they had brought an F40 out there to run against you guys, right. and you roasted it. So they went got an LM F40, and they roasted the LM F40. And they put Stan Cox in the driver's seat. So Stan Cox was a pro driver for Ferrari back in the day. They shipped him over here, an Englishman, put him in the car to run against us, and uh, he and I mean, this car was putting a hurt on him, not just beating it a little yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah, we really hurt him, yeah. So there's a, and I can't remember the name of it, I should, but the uh, the Red Pantera you guys ran against quite a bit, that was a pretty... That was my car. That was your car. So yeah. that was the only other really stout Pantera out there right. that came even yeah. close to that. Oh, this is gonna be fun, Alex. Yes, it is. <laughs> can't wait. I wish we could fire it, but I see the coil, you know, I don't think it'll run, but this thing, when you fire it up, it, you're gonna say, it. first start it outside. Inside, it's... Well, this car is, uh, what, 2,400 pounds, 2,500 pounds? 2,450. 2,450. Yeah, we scaled it. 2450. I can't believe you guys added more horsepower after running at 206 miles. I did. I never drove it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I wasn't part of that. I, I mean, this car, in theory, adding that, it should be a 210, 212 car. Oh, yeah. Now. Yeah. 
Maybe even 220. But you'd probably want some rear wing if you want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would go with probably a reinforced deck, not that flimsy thing of fiberglass, yeah. okay? Because that'll fold up. If you put a wing on that fiberglass, I've, I've watched it. Wing, different tires. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. This will yeah. beat your 550 Marinello. Yes, it will. Hey, it beat an F40 Le Mans, yeah. right? right? With a pro driver in it. And they were upset. So two <laughs> Italian guys walked over to me, and they, we had the deck lid on, and he says, hey, can you take that deck lid off? I says, why? It broke in English. He said, we want to see Uno turbocharger or Dewey? <laughs> and no. we pulled it off and showed him the carburetor. And they were just like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. This car was crazy wild. But from reading the specs, even right now, if you're out there, this car would be, I don't, I didn't, I don't know of anything that would run as hard as this car. No. Even now. If you want to win, you take this to the track. Agreed. Yeah. And then when you get there, I bet you there's guys that remember this car, and when you roll that off the trailer, they're going to say, oh, they're back. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is exciting. That gets me crazy excited. Because yeah, yeah. that's a competitive class. Oh, yeah. Well, see, we, okay, so what we did back in the day, we, we couldn't do a VSCCA racing because we had aluminum heads. Okay. So that's outlaw. I said, I don't want to do that. Well, I says, what do you want to do? I said, I want to do outlaw racing. So what we would do is we had a sham. It was called Performance Drivers Association. It looked like a driver's ed school, like Porsche has and all that stuff. We had different classes and stuff like that. But the last run group was twice as long, 40 minutes. And we pull out one at a time, like, you know, you're doing a regular driver's ed class, but we would grid up on the back straightaway. And then we'd come hot wow. for 40 minutes or just have at it. And so we would do that twice a month. And this car won 28 of those in a row. Okay, you guys called this car Pony? Pony for, okay. okay I need to know what the acronym okay. is because I don't know. <laughs> P-O-N-E for Panteras of New England. It was, it was a club project. A lot okay. of guys in the club worked on the car. And uh, so, and then there were other things that a lot of guys know it as a Pantera from hell for whatever reason. Yeah. Maybe play on Pony Express. <laughs> okay, Panteras of New England. See that? Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. I kept reading, reading, reading. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I don't know what that acronym is. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, this is just fantastic. Wow. That is beyond cool. Can't wait. I think you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> well, how about I just pay you what your asking price is? Okay. And we start right. loading these things. Okay. Yep. Let's do that. Does that work? Yep. 71 Pantera race car. It is rare for a race car to have a title. Yep. That is awesome. 74 Pantera. And that looks like an old title. 86. Not terribly old, yep. but old enough. Okay. And then the uh, T Bird. Is and this is the salient part of that. It says the acquisition of a certificate of title for any vehicle manufactured prior to uh, 1981 shall not be required. So, so they're sold on a bill of sale prior to 81, right. like in New York at 75. And there it is, and that's. And I've got another one that I need you to sign. Okay. That, oh yeah. That right. takes it from that to me. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So okay. tell me who I'm doing the paperwork with, right. and, and then there's an appraisal on that T-bird that's sitting there. So I asked Gary if there's anything extra I could buy: signs, wheels, motors gearboxes, Ferrari engines, Colombo motors. He said, yeah, well, matter of fact, they got these. Yeah, right. Tell us so, what they are. So these are group four or five wheels that uh, the factory produced. They were 13 inches wide in the back, uh, I believe 10 inches in the front, all 15 inch. And that's what came stock on these cars. Uh, like these, I believe, came off a, a GT5 car and they only made 183 of those. Okay. So these are the actual factory wheels. Now, not it goes against my grain a lot of people are putting aftermarket 17 inch wheels on i don't think that's right i like these it's just uh they're campy wheels and oh they're incredible so if you had a group four or group five car and you needed these they're invaluable right. but however if you had a regular pantera yeah and you put a set of group four flares or something on it right you need these right and right on there if you look right on the rim it says di tomaso campy's made for di tomaso that is so awesome thank you for selling me those yeah, and yes we own those too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What did it say right here? Molly and... Oh, that's Wally's Pantera. Oh, Wally, Wally Auto Body. Yeah. <laughs> Wally's Auto Body. I'm putting that back on there. Wally's Auto, not... Wally's Auto. Auto. Wally's Auto. I bet you can recreate that, can't you, Zach? Probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is so cool. In uh, Las Vegas, this is a Pantera, you know, club event, right? Uh, everybody stays at the Union Plaza, which is an old hotel, but one of our... Uh, oh, uh, Pantera Club members is part of that. Do you want that picture? You can have Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay. Are one of these cars in it? Uh, no, we never brought the cars out there. Wally says, so Wally's thing is this. He says, we never talk in a pit. 
We don't bring cars to car shows. Okay. We drive it in the track and let the car do the talking. So that, well, was long. that car definitely has done the talking, that's for sure. Right. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. Hey, that's signed by uh, Carol Shelby. You I can have it. that too if you want it. Really? Grab it, yeah. Well, that's outstanding. Yeah. Good. Best wishes to Wally from Carol Shelby. So this yeah. is my second or third real Carol Shelby signed poster. That's the car hauler we towed that car in, so the car hauler is right behind that. And it's got it's got the yep. De Tomaso performance paint right. asbestos. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's just hey, what do you, you know? That's awesome. So he started De Tomaso performance in 1973. Well, the car's in amazing condition for as long as it goes on built it.
off. Is that cool or what? Yeah. Huh? yeah. That's just the first run. This is going to be incredible. It runs! She's alive! How cool is that? That's awesome. <laughs> it shakes. Well, Alex, it's... now you know you're not going to have that much of a struggle. They run. Yeah. It shakes the ground like the cocoa. Oh, it feels, it feels awesome. nasty. <laughs> I don't know how long it's been sitting. Right rear brake was locked and it popped, so that's good. Alex and James are down there loading the cars. Me and Gary up here talking shop. It sure has been an honor to be here and an honor to meet you and Wally. Absolutely. Unbelievable Absolutely. what you guys have done for the world of Panteras. Right, we've had a lot of fun doing it. So I, I think Wally is arguably the king of Panteras. Yeah, he's quite a guy. You drove the world's fastest Pantera. I was honored to ride, drive his car, that's all I can say. That's amazing, it yeah, really is. Now we just had a fruit plate because we needed a break. Right. <laughs> What is your favorite place to eat? And we're in Southfield, right? Right. So that would be JG's just over the line in East Granby, but uh, right. it's, it's very close. Are they open late? I think so. Joan, what time? Nine. Oh, nine. Nine o'clock. Oh. It's going to be pushing. Okay. We'll make it. Um, how about Roma's? Well, if you guys are in for a late dinner, I'm buying. All right. Well, oh, yeah. It's you know it's a pleasure to meet you, so I'm good with it. Yeah. Well, outstanding. So we're yeah, going to figure good. out what's still open. That's yeah. where we're going to go. <laughs> Hotel freshened up a little bit, and we're in Carroll, mm -hmm. which is close to Suffield. All the restaurants are closed. Yeah, we're sorry that Gary and Joe couldn't go with us, but we're at Marco's Italian Restaurant. The only thing that's open, but it was highly recommended by somebody else in the area. So here we go. James, are you brave? I'm always brave. You want to split the muscles fra Diablo for Absolutely, appetizer? Absolutely. I'm pretty sure Alex isn't going to do that. No. Come on. <laughs> no. Jump in with us, no, Alex. Thank you. That's All right. Let's do that just for the table. <laughs> okay. Go. Diablo muscles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm in for that. How about a meatball, Alex? You going to try that? Yes, I am. <laughs> Alex can handle meatballs. Just seeing so you know, um, the bottom uh, plate is just. Uh, to put the shells in. Okay, very good. All right, you got it. We can do that. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're gonna try the uh, Diablo Muscle. I assume it's hot. I don't know. It's great. They're really good, James. If I'm there's any left over, you. I'll let you try one. You let me try one, the rest of the bowl's yours. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That looks that. Awesome. good. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <gasps> Look at that. Yeah. That's a piece of artwork. This looks like good. a chess game. So Alex ordered the personal favorite. Wow. Yes. Is that like I, I don't know what it was. It was. I do ravioli, believe right? ravioli with vodka sauce and. Oh, so what's good about those? Is that I you can separate those for these guys. I got those. the owner's favorite. Look at that. So good. Last but not least there. Oh, look at that thing. What is that? Oh, I got one more. 
<laughs> Lobster, shrimp, fettuccine with all the peppers. <laughs> I don't know how much better you can get. Woo! See that steam? Best buy for sure. Wow. He's having to think about that. Decadent. Really We're at Marcos. An amazing meal. Incredibly rich. Huh. What better to top it off? Chocolate cheesecake. <laughs> Outstanding. We'll see you next week.